Hello and welcome to another flight gear tutorial. Today I want to show you how to handle the Messerschmitt BF109, especially during takeoff and landing, and give you some side information about how to start up the engine, uh, what about its flight characteristics during dogfight and aerobatics, and stuff like that. So let's get into the cockpit. So the, the model and the cockpit of the Messerschmitt 109, I think it's one of the nicest of all the World War II warbirds in, in flight gear. I think it's only surpassed by the P-51 Mustang model in flight gear, but um, I really like this model a lot. Uh, the, all the beautiful details here, it's all fully animated. For example, the rudder pedals here, even the brake pedals, when you press the brake pedals, they fold forward. This is a, a clear sign of high quality modeling. The stick and all these switches here, when you press Ctrl C, you see which one of them are actually animated, which ones you can move. For example, this visor here for, for combat. There, you see there is a little switch here on the left side, which is normally hidden. It is very dark. When you click it, then you see a crosshair. This is very useful. You can also use it for landing when the nose of the plane is pointing up in the air. It can help you aim, for example, for the clouds here. You don't see the end of the runway. And to keep your plane on the center line, you just aim for a certain cloud and try to keep, keep uh, the the uh, plane's nose oriented towards that cloud. This is at least a trick that I sometimes use to keep the plane on track during uh, rolling after touchdown. Okay, now let's get into the startup procedure. Um, I will not explain all the instruments to you, but just the most important ones that you need for startup, takeoff and landing. So, of course, there is a speedometer and an altimeter. These are not so important for us now. And the, the plane, it has a very advanced propeller system with a variable pitch angle. And this instrument here, this clock shows you this little uh, dial. It shows um, the pitch angle of the propeller. And at the moment, the pitch angle is in a fixed value with uh, upper and lower uh, case November. You can change the pitch angle, something at 10 and a half, 11 is a standard pitch. It's not, it's not coarse and not very fine. So this is a standard pitch that you could, for example, also use for takeoff and landing. And if you, but if you apply full throttle, then automatically this is the main switch to change from, from manual to automatic uh, pitch handling for the propeller. When you switch this forward, you see it starts moving. Then it's automatic. I put it to manual and I go back to 10 and a half, 10, 10 and a half, uh, I think it's in thousands. I'm not sure what is the, what is the metric, but now we are back to fixed. But when we uh, fully accelerate during takeoff, then you will see that the plane itself takes over control over the propeller pitch angle and then this value goes up and up. Okay, this is something you need to know just uh, for later, when you, once you have taken off, then this uh, thing will be uh, controlled automatically by the plane. So for the startup procedure, here you got the thrust lever. We will push it up uh, to maybe 20% later when we ignite the engine. The magnetos, of course, they are switched off. We switch them to both. So click on this field on top to go to the top position with this little switch. This is the starter button here. We will use it later. Then be, uh, uh, underneath the, the thrust lever, there is the cutoff lever. It has three positions, back, center, and front. And we put it to the center position for startup. I think it can remain in this position all the time. Then the Radiator flaps, you should keep them open during startup and, and then we can switch them to automatic. So we put them open, you will see when, you, when we look, these are the radiator flaps and now they are fully open. You need this for thermal, thermal health of your engine during startup when there's no cooling. 
Okay, this is the primer. Press it five to six times. One, two, three, four, five. Apply 20% of throttle. And now we should be able to start the engine with this starter button. Maybe the still paused. Yeah, it was in paused uh, position the, the whole simulation. I unpaused it and now you can hear the engine. It started immediately and comes alive and now it works fine. The plane is still on um, on wheel brakes, so it won't move although we have already applied 20% of engine power. Then just two more things. Here on the left, uh, this, these two wheels, the wheel on the left, it indicates it's for flaps. If I fold down the flaps to position one, one of three, then you can see it starts turning. And from outside you see the flaps are coming down. For takeoff we need flaps position one. There are three flaps positions for, uh, for landing. You can use flaps position two or three. And this wheel on the right, it's your elevator trim. You can either put this uh, somewhere on the control on your keyboard or joystick, or you can control it here manually here on the axis. Then it would start, uh, when you use the mouse wheel to turn it, then you can trim up and down the elevator. And also I can do it with my elevator trim buttons on my joystick here. Okay. Let's just check. I think we get too much of fuel for this little test flight, so I will reduce the fuel. I'm cheating with the fuel. We don't have a drop tank. Half, half the quantity is enough for this very short test flight. Okay, we can also put the throttle back to idle and it will still keep the engine alive. Okay, now we put the, the uh, radiator flaps to automatic. Okay, and now this is the, from my point of view, the main part of this tutorial is the takeoff procedure. There is a there is a guide in the aircraft help that gives you some uh, information how this is done under the chapter takeoff, and we're following more or less this guide here. So I'm using flaps position one. In fact, you could take off without flaps, but then the procedure is different. And this is what I'm showing you is only one of, uh, of several possible um, procedures how to do a successful takeoff. This is the one that fits me personally best. So I will apply full throttle once uh, I release the wheel brakes. I pull back the elevator. Let's have a look from outside. I, I fully pull back the elevator to press the rear wheel on the runway. I give I do a full acceleration which frees the automatic um, propeller pitch control. I don't care for the for the fixed pitch control. I just let the plane control it. I use full acceleration and then I watch the speedometer and once we are at around 150 kilometers per hour, the plane starts a roll movement and as soon as this roll movement is uh, can be can be felt, then I pitch forward so that the plane is rolling only on its main gear and the tail wheel is up, is up above the runway. And from that point on, you can steer the plane with the wheel brakes and later when you have gained more speed, also with the rudder. I use a combination of wheel brakes and rudder once the tail wheel is, is, uh, has lifted up from the runway. Before, you can only use the wheel brakes for effective lateral steering. So, let's do this procedure now. I, I press down the brake pedals, but I release the parking brake. We are on flaps position 1, this is important. And then I apply full throttle. I wait until the engine is revving up. And now I let it go. I can steer, I can fine-tune a little with the, with the um, wheel brakes. And I watch the speedometer and around 150 it will start rolling. And now it's rolling. 
and I pitch forward so now we are running only on the main gear. And now I can steer the plane with the rudder instead of the wheel brakes. When it's too much then you have to apply also wheel brakes. So it's quite nice and stable this way and now we take off. Once you're running only on your main gear on the front wheels then it's easy. Okay, fold up the flaps, fold up the gear. Let's have a look from outside. You see the rear wheel is not retractable. I will not do too much of aerobatics with you. I just want to mention what I find the characteristics of this plane. It is not a typical dogfighter. So it is not like it's super agile around its, its pitch axis. So flying, flying loopings is possible, but it is very hard because the plane is extremely loose around its roll axis, axis. So rolling along the roll axis, this is where this plane is really good at and you could even call it a little bit instable. Now I will show you the maximum roll rate that this plane can, can achieve and it's amazing. So I use full throttle, left rudder and then we roll with full capacity and you see it rolls quite fast. I would call this something like a longitudinal plane. So it is very agile or, uh, along its longitudinal roll axis, but it's, um, it's a little bit lazy around your, uh, the pitch axis. And it tends to do a snap roll, so a sudden unintended roll ar around the roll axis when it gets too slow. So we make this 180 degrees turn. And we're looking for our airport again. We are here uh, at the Innsbruck airport in the Inn Valley in Austria. So I use flaps one. Now we can see the runway. So landing is somewhat easier than starting, but many many uh, contemporary uh, pilots of the Messerschmitt 109 they complained about the narrow stance of the of the main gear, and that led to many accidents, especially during landing. So it has a because the those uh, the main gear is centered in the in the plane's body and not in the wings like with the Mustang P51 and so this makes it a little bit instable during during touchdown. It can roll over to either side very easily. So use the wheel brakes to keep the plane on track. Once you're slow enough, you can pitch up to press the rear wheel on the on the ground and then you can apply full brakes. Now that should do. And now you can apply both brakes fully and that will uh, make the plane come to a standstill still quite quickly. You've seen that was a very high speed touchdown, but nevertheless it was not a real problem. So we activate the parking brakes. And uh, now just uh, one hint, two, two buttons you should not press. Don't pull this lever because it will turn your uh, Messerschmitt into a cabriolet. It will uh, make an emergency ejection of your rooftop. And don't press this red uh, button here because it will retract the gear and of course that will damage the plane when you retract the gear while you're standing on the runway, while you're not up in the air. Now I will just for fun show you this effect when you when you eject the cabin so your your canopy it's for an emergency uh, exit for the pilot and you pull this up see suddenly the the rooftop is gone and now you're flying in a cabriolet okay just for the fun of it and now we will stop the engine just by shutting down the magnetos
So this is in fact the end of our little Messerschmitt 109 tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this little, little uh, video. Thanks for watching and see you again next time. Goodbye.